that you have provided for every need that you have given us identity you have given us purpose and that you continue to make a way for us thank you because you are who you say you are and that is what matters we know who we are because of the fact that you never change and because you said it I believe it Because your word is true. And we can stick to your promises. We can be certain that what you say about us and the plans that you have for us, because you know the plans that you have for us, and they are for our good, not for evil, not for disaster, 
not to harm us, but to give us a hope and a future. And so we believe it this morning. We stand on your word. You are the way maker. Say with me. Declare that he is here in this place. stop working you never stop never stop how many believe that with me even when i can see you know you're working even when i can see you know you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop you call me even when i can see you know you're working even when i can see you know you're working you never stop never stop working you never stop Stop working, even when I can see I know you're working. Even when I can see I know you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. They make a miracle work. Light in the darkness. That is who you are. Keep it light in the darkness. 
where we stand and who you are this morning. That is what gives us foundation. It gives us a solid rock to stand on, to build upon. If it weren't because you truly are who you say you are and you never change and your love is unfailing and your promises are true, we would not be who we are. We would not be able to stand here. Thank you because we trust that you are. That is who you are. You are the I am, the great I am, the one who fulfills every promise, the one we can confide in and trust in and run to. this morning. Celebrate who he is this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, family. Good morning. I miss y'all. Hey. Good morning. I'm celebrating being here as well as celebrating the Lord who made it possible for me to be here. Amen. And made it be possible for me to be here amongst you. So welcome. Good morning. Welcome to a yet another epic Sunday here within the Emmaus community. Hey, everybody streaming live via satellite. We appreciate you. All right. Good morning, everybody. Shall we pray our way into? All right. Hearts and minds clear. Eyes closed. Good morning, Heavenly Father. We thank you. We come to you humbly and excitedly just because you thought it not robbery for us to be here. You made it possible not only for us to be here, for those who aren't here physical, physically, you made it possible for their hearts, minds, and spirits to still be here with us. We thank you for all of the wonderful works that you're moving in, over, around, and through this community. We thank you for all of the wonderful blessings. We thank you for this amazing word that you will be that you will be delivering to us through your most humble and willing servant, Father. We pray that the word comes through with simplicity, clarity, and power. We thank you that everyone is going to feel a spiritual increase as a result of being in this place today. We, we thank you for everything and we ask that you continue to bless us in the Lord Jesus Christ's name. Amen. continue in the atmosphere of worship and acknowledging that he is worthy thank you father because we gather this morning with the sole purpose to lift your name on high and acknowledge your presence your power your priority in our lives Without you, we are nothing. Without you, we fall apart. But when you are sovereign and when you are the king, when you reign in our lives, Lord, everything functions the way it should. When we align ourselves to you. 
So it is our desire that you continue to draw us closer to you this morning as we seek you and as we lift your name. we're going to be who we're called to be and if we're going to demonstrate to the world who Jesus is we need to be firm upon the rock we need to be built on his love 
that cannot be moved, that cannot be shaken. So I want you to declare with me this morning, I will build my life upon your love and I will not be shaken. I will not be shaken. I don't know what you're going through this morning. I don't know what you're experiencing and what emotions you're dealing with. But your emotions are not you. They're an expression, but they are not you. Your emotions are what the Word of God, your, who you are is what the Word of God says. And what He has already decreed over your life. And I want you to stand upon that. I want you to stand firm on what He says about you. But you have to make the choice. You have to make the choice. You have to say, I will build my house upon the rock. I will build my house upon the rock. I will not take anything less than that. No other foundation. Everything else will fail. Everything else will falter. But I will stand upon the love of God that never fails. How many of you are willing to declare that with me this morning? I will build my house upon you, Lord. Say it with me. And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. And I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken. And I will put
say, when we say we want to build our life on a foundation, we have to remember just, we have to remember that's just a decree of what we want to do. So my name is Jeremy Tyler and I'm here for the prayers of the people. So I made a decree at the, towards the end of the year after a conversation with my doctor and other things. And I said, I want to lose weight. So I began the process of losing weight. I lost, since that time in November to now, I lost 18 pounds. But, you know, I'm happy about that. But I look at it as this. If I really, I, I, may, I, I called it a decree, but if I really decreed it, some of the things I did would have changed. Because see, there was a few cheat days in that. There was a few times where I wasn't consistent. But if I build my house upon his word, if I choose to follow him, I, I most likely would have lost more, but it makes you think if we, as followers of Christ, if we go ahead and say we want to build our life, that means we have to change some of the things. So the cheat days wouldn't be around. So the days when we didn't read the Bible would be smaller. The days where we didn't pray every day, the days where we just got distracted. So can you imagine what it would be like if we really said, I want to build my life on your foundation? Can you imagine who we would be if we really just pushed ourselves on that? If we said, God, help, remind me to read every day. Father, teach me what I need to be doing. So where I am right now, I could be better this time next year. Please join me in this word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment right now, God. We thank you for this moment where we get a chance to decree to you that we want to build our life, Father, that we want to go further than we ever thought we could. We want to be able to be your children in everything that we do, God. So be with us, God, and help us eliminate the distractions that pull us away from you, God. Be with us as we take this moment to say we want to change, Father. We don't want things to be what they used to be. We want them to be better, God, and we know we can get better through you, God. We know that next is now, so we ask that you walk with us through this next, Father. We know you have plans for us that are unlike the plans that we imagine, Father, so we celebrate that moment, God. We celebrate what you do and everything that you are, God. We are here today, God, to say we will build our lives upon your word, God. We will build our lives because we know that you hold our lives in your hand. So we ask that you shape our lives, Father. We ask that you continue to mold us and make us into the people who you called us to be, God. And we take this moment, God, to give you the names of those who are a part of our lives, those who are our friends, those who are our family, who need you as well, God. Because sometimes the foundation can be weak, but that's because you didn't make it, Father. So we ask that you be with these people, God, as we give you these names. We take these names and we say, Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we look forward to what you are about to do, God. You are changing us. You are making us. You are molding us into something better, God. We are thankful for you, Father, for this opportunity, for this moment to be with you, to be broken and then remade, God. So we celebrate the brokenness that has taken place, God, and what is about to come, Father. We thank you for that, God. We thank you for how you shift things. We thank you for how you make things. We thank you for how you just continue to continually be with us and guide us. Thank you for that, God. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Again, I am before you. My name is Stacy Hopkins, and it is my pleasure to put you up on things around here in the Emmaus community. Is that okay? Is that all right? All right. First and foremost, I would love for you guys to turn your eyes to the screen behind me so that you can partake in our video announcement. Our ongoing collective effort and symbolize the power of listening to and acting upon God's call. Let's continue to listen. More than ever, as we continue to take donations, we realize that our next is now. Please remember that next Sunday, June 2nd, will be an amazing day at the Emmaus community. At our 10 a.m. communion gathering, we will have the commissioning of our fourth Joshua tribe, followed by the ministerial licensing ceremonies of Natasha Richards and Wanda Simpson. Please come and support this sacred occasion. Light refreshments will follow. You did not choose me. I chose you. John 15, 16, NIV. Please note that also on June 3rd at 3 p.m., Pastor Elise and elders of the Emmaus community invite you back to 925 MacArthur Drive for the affirmation and installation of Isaac E. Hayes. A reception will follow immediately. Please be sure to attend this special ceremony. Starting May 30th, our daytime Thursday Bible and Brunch will continue to explore the armor of God and our 7 p.m. exploration will be breaking into men's and women's groups. The women will be reading Present Over Perfect by Shauna Nequist, and the men will be reading Kingdom Man by Tony Evans. The books will be available for purchase in the Fusion Cafe. Please see Reverend Jesus Marquez with questions. The Northern Illinois University Summer Reading Program returns to the Emmaus community, and we need a few hours of your time between the dates of June 11th and July 13th. The reading program is being fully facilitated by NIU and will not require your participation. Emmaus volunteers will simply sit in the building to help monitor activity and redirect participants as they enter or exit. We particularly need volunteers on Saturdays to break up the 8.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. shift. Please sign up on the sign up form attached to this e-blast or at the EmmausCommunity.org website. Please see Wanda Simpson for more information. Remember, our Emmaus Community Men's Health Day is still scheduled for Saturday, June 8th. Let's take a break from our announcements and listen to this important message. Good, that was yeah. good, good oh, talk, yeah. man. Our brothers are always willing to share, man. We, we've set the when environment. The, when the brothers get together, we need that, Indeed, man. indeed, you know indeed. Saying? And you know what? This right here is going to be good, too, man. Oh, now, yeah. when I brought it up, you seemed so. a little apprehensive, you know, uh, about the, the, the whole health fair thing and getting tested and yeah, all of that. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm going to work it. I'm okay. good. Okay. I'm on board, but you know, going to the doctor all the time and having people poke you, that ain't really my thing. You know, well, well see, they won't be a poke. Well, I was going to say, they wouldn't be poking you here, right, but right. there's going to be a little bit of that. I will admit that. Right. But it's good. It's good for you. Good information, man. I mean, and besides, man, didn't you just call me like three times this week telling me your stomach was hurting? Well, man, if you eat a burrito at 11 o'clock at night, your stomach is going to hurt a little <laughs> bit, man. It's extra beans and stuff. Well, that's you know true. What I'm that's so, true. So but I'm good. good. I feel good. <laughs> You feel good and you feel look good, but you, want, there once but you want to be sure. And the only yeah. way you can be sure is if you see your doctor on a regular basis. And you know, between you, my mother, my lady, friends, I always talk about go to the doctor, go to the doctor. I make appointments, man. I do. Uh huh. I cancel them. Oh, man, I mean, that is unbelievable. You, you tell I got, me. I got work, I got shows to watch. Games, gotta be a man cave. You know, I just can't make them all. None of that's gonna matter if you're not healthy, brother. If you're not healthy, none of that is gonna matter. You wanna guess about your health? You get you are you a doctor? No, I'm not. No, a you're not a doctor. No. So you need to co go and see your doctor and get checked out. Now, on the day of the fair, yeah. we're gonna have three checks you can have. Three you checks. can have a PSA, a glucose, 
and you could also have your blood pressure checked. All right, man. You talk about PSAs, BACs, BHs, <laughs> all these UFCs. What we doing, man? We doing health or we doing spelling? What we doing? We doing health, man. Okay. And we get right. information so that we may be healthy. Okay. That's fine. Well, you know what? Since you put it like that, man, and so I can prove people that I'm healthy, and then so I can know for sure. Thank you. That's you know the thing. I mean? Knowing I'm for gonna get, sure. I'm going to get my test done at the health fair. And then whatever happens after that, then I'll follow up with a doctor. Amen. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm talking This is what we got to do. Man, family, we got to get healthy. We got to get checked. We got to get our bodies in order so we can continue to do the work that God has set forth for us to do. We can't, if we're not healthy, then we can't do anything. So ladies, Bring your husbands out, bring your sons out, grab someone you know that's a little bit hesitant about going to the doctor, bring them to the health fair, get them checked out so they can feel comfortable and know and get the information that we need. So come on out. We'll see you June 8th. 10 a.m. All right. So there it is, men of Emmaus. Don't miss this important opportunity to wrestle control of your health. Doctors and other health professionals are planning to be on site. The health fair will include tests for blood glucose levels, prostate PSA tests, blood pressure, colonoscopy information, and general health and fitness instruction. Please see Jonathan Thomas or Alan Thompson for more information. Also, we need to have an accurate count for the products needed for the PSA test. See www.theemmauscommunity.org for additional information on the fair. We need strong attendance at this event. If you are a member of the Emmaus community and have or will recently graduate from junior high, high school, college, or graduate school, the Emmaus community wants to recognize your accomplishments. Please submit your name, an electronic photo if possible, and college and degree earned if applicable to announcements at theemmauscommunity.org. Names and photos are needed by June 9th. By the way, congratulations. In observance of Memorial Day, the building will be closed on Monday, May 27th and Tuesday, May 28th. In event of an emergency, Emmaus elders will monitor the telephone line at 708-481-7025. Here at the Emmaus community, we are striving to be generous in our giving. It is just a part of our biblical act of worship. We begin by simply obeying God with our tithes, believing for increase as we grow in faith to give beyond our 10%. So you can either drop your offering in the Emmaus giving baskets that are conveniently located in the back of the sanctuary, fusion cafe, and family viewing area, or you can mail your offering to the Emmaus community at 925 MacArthur Drive, Chicago Heights, Illinois, 60411, or you can use our convenient GiveLify application on your mobile phone. Thank you, family. This has been your Emmaus Community Announcements for Sunday, May 26, 2019. Amen. And we have just one little uh, addition to that. Actually, for the sign up for the NIU reading program, you will find these little half sheet slips, sign up sheets in the backs of the pews. And it's got the time slots Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. There are several time slot options. Please do fill it out and turn it in to one of our staff. Okay, amen. And the church said? Amen. And the church said? All right. And visitors, 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 we love to have you. We love to receive you. And we also love to see you some more. So please make sure that you come back and you visit us two, three, four, 27 times because no two epic Sundays are exactly alike. And we, we love Jesus hard and we love y'all hard and we love each other hard. So it will be just a great pleasure for you guys to continue to come be with us. Join us. Sit down. Shake the hands of our elders, our pastoral staff, please, at the conclusion of this gathering. Also, please make sure that you visit the visitor's table located in the uh, gathering area in the Fusion Cafe so that you can get some goodies, some smiles, some sugar, okay, and invitations for you and your loved ones to come back with us, all right? And because if you don't know, here 
part of our loving heart and loving the Lord heart is also sharing what he has done for us in our lives. So we celebrate hard. We eat hard. We party hard. We love hard. We celebrate hard because we know that God works hard for us. Amen. So if there are any celebrations in the house, we want you to quickly come on and join me up here on the stage. Some birthdays, some anniversaries, some come up some blow up situations, some new job type of situation. Your credit score went up 60 points. Hallelujah. I'm just saying. Your lights came on. Your AC is working. Just saying. You put you planted flowers and it rained today. Hallelujah. Just saying, grandbabies, nieces, nephews, nothing. We're not celebrating anything in a particular kind of way today. All right. Well, I have one or two. Uh, at my job, I was recently nominated for certified staff member of the year. <laughs> Complete shock. Complete shock because I simply believe that I just do what I'm called to do, period. Nothing else. So I'm very honored and humbled by that, and I guess I'll be waiting with bated breath to see if I won. And thank you to the Emmaus community for celebrating and praying for my mother. She did have major surgery in April on her spine. Her, su her surgery was indeed successful. She is recovering well. She is even able to take her brace off her neck. Hallelujah. And she is moving around the house more. She's doing well, so thank you. I am still receiving cards that I am taking over to the house. Thank you for that. I really, really, really appreciate you. Okay? All right. And we shall move on with, a, with prayer. Shall we pray our way to the rest of this, this gathering, pray over our offering, and pray for all of the wonderful things that the Lord is providing? Bow your heads, please. It's us again, Heavenly Father. We thank you. We love you so much, and we love all that you are to us, all that you will be to us, all that you always have been to us. Thank you for providing with abundance. You are so graceful, graceful and merciful towards us, Lord. Lord, you provide for us even when we don't think that we are worthy, and even when we know we aren't worthy. You are still there, just like Sister Shirley said earlier. You continue to work. You are always working, even when we can't see it. We ask that you continue to just love on us, Lord. Provide for us, Lord, so that we can be beacons of light to make sure that your word and your purpose goes forward. We ask that you guide all, every heart, mind, and spirit and body, Lord, so that we can all not only walk in your ways, that we can be attractive enough to make others walk in your ways along with us. We ask that we continue to multiply and perpetuate your will every day, all day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you close your eyes with me this morning and I will as you hear these words, I pray that it'll be your prayer. God is always calling us to himself and is saying, if you would just humble yourself, if you would just repent, if you would just turn away from everything that is hindering your walk, I will come, I will come and I will heal your land. I will hear you, I will listen to you, I will respond to you. So let this be our prayer this morning, Lord. Heal my heart. Heal my mind, heal my family. Heal my finances. So that I, that I may extend your healing to others. I want to be part of a new breed, a new generation of people who step into the next that you have for us. things unseen 
show me how to love like you have a love to take its place in selfless faith we declare it like this I see a generation rising up to take the place with selfless faith with selfless faith yeah. I see a near revival Stirring as we pray and see We're on our knees We're on our knees Sing it again, I see a generation I see a generation Rising up Rising up to take their place With selfless faith With selfless faith yeah. I see a near revival. I see a near revival. So ring as we pray and seek. We're on our knees. We're on our knees. Singing Hosanna. 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 again I see a generation but this time I want you to stand up and I want you to rise up and I want you to take your place and I want you to declare this this morning I will be part of that generation that is selfless that thinks less about ourselves and thinks more about what his will is amen sing it with me I see a generation I see a generation rising up Rising up to take there with selfless faith, with selfless, all right, with selfless faith. Yes. I see a new revival, I see a near as we pray and seek, stirring as we pray and seek. We're on our knees, yes. we're on our singing Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Sing Hosanna, 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 Hosanna in the highest. Sing Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. How beautiful you sound. Hosanna, 
Oh, we sing Hosanna to you, Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Heal my heart and make it clean. Say, open up my eyes, open up my eyes to the things unseen. Show me how to love like you have loved me. Break my heart, break my heart for one breaks your everything I am for your kingdom's cause. As I walk from earth into eternity. things unseen show me how to love like you have loved me Everything I am, everything I am, I will lay it down for your kingdom come, yeah, I will lay it down for your kingdom come, Lord. Everything I am, everything I am, as I walk from earth into eternity. Lord, we know that our say. Our walk here is temporary. But we truly and surely want to stay true to what you have aligned and predestined for us. Help us to walk in your ways. To not deviate from what you have established for us, Lord. We want to be a people after your heart. That our hearts will break for what breaks yours. That we will walk in integrity and in faithfulness and in truth. Amen. 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 We do honor and praise the Spirit of God that's in this place. We recognize that the spirit rests and rules and abides among the people of faith who dare to trust and dare to believe that God is good and God is gracious. And so we gather in this holy and sacred space with confidence and with questions, with hopes and with defeats. But wherever you are on the journey, we are here to work, walk it out together. And so I am so grateful and so glad that you are here on this weekend. And I give praise, honor, and glory to all of God, for all of God's goodness and grace to us. Would you continue in the spirit of prayer with me and for me? Dear God, I thank you for an opportunity to be together on this Sunday. I thank you, Lord God, for the Emmaus community, which is the reason why we gather. But more importantly, oh God, I thank you, oh God, for what happens when we get together, Lord God. So as so many people this weekend are having cookouts and fellowship opportunities and becoming family, Lord God, we thank you for the family that gathers here, oh God, on this Sunday and testimony that your will is coming to pass in our lives. Help us, oh God, to continue to be an outpost of your love, your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you, Lord God, that we get to be families 
so I pray even now, Lord God, that the words that I prepared, oh God, and prayed over, oh God, will be food for the soul, even as folks prepare for food for their body. I pray that your word will go forth with simplicity, clarity, and power. I thank you for the opportunity, oh God, to shepherd your word. And we do declare, oh God, that we build our hope and our faith on a firm foundation, Lord God. We believe that we will make it to the end to see, Lord God, your goodness and your grace and your mercy, even in the land of the living. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I am so grateful that we are all are here on today. I want to start our time together, our sermonic time together, um, by reading our scripture first. And so if you have um, a way to access the scripture, I invite you to turn to Psalm 15, that's Psalm 15, verse 1 through 5. And for your um, hearing this morning, I'm going to read the message version of the text, Psalm, the 15th division, um, verses 1 through 5, and it reads this way, God, who gets invited to dinner at your place? How do we get on your guest list? The answer to that question is in verse 2 through 5. It says this, walk straight, act right, tell the truth, don't hurt your friend, don't blame your neighbor, despise the despicable, keep your word even when it costs you, make an honest living, never take a bribe. You'll never get blacklisted if you live like this. God, who gets invited to dinner at your place? How do we get on the guest list for your cookout? Amen. Beloved, um, the scripture is pretty clear. Um, It doesn't have to be that complicated. The followers of Jesus and friends of God are supposed to have integrity. We are to be known as truth tellers, straight shooters, good friends, principal partners, passionate participants, wise workers, ethical employees, and moral managers. To have integrity is more than a beautiful aspiration or some nebulous idea out there somewhere. It is supposed to be practiced daily in real time. That is how we get invited to God's great meal. In fact, it's Latin origins, the word integer for my mathematic folk, integer reminds us that to have integrity is to be whole, to be complete, just like a whole number is in mathematics, negative one, zero, and one, integer, integrity, they first cousins, are you with me? And so I just want to start off by saying it's not that complicated. To have integrity is to have unity, to be unified, to be one, to be unified in our words, our way, in our witness. To have integrity is to have communion or fellowship with our mind by body, spirit, and soul, to be the same person in church and in the streets. Are y'all still with me? Uh, To be the same even when nobody is looking. That's integrity. Integrity is where passion reveals purpose. It's honoring and accepting the life that is trying to live inside you. Um, Integrity uh, suggests that there ought to be some kind of unity between our confession and our actions. We should be the standard bearer showing other people how to live in the way that makes it better for everyone, benefiting the least and blessing the lonely, which is why integrity is one of our core passions, our core commitments. Along with relationships on week one and grace on last week, we want to do life together with love in action and truth. We don't want to be fragmented, disjointed, or hypocritical. Y'all still with me? Our core passion, integrity, is defined as we strive to be transparent, honest, trustworthy, and fair. It's not that complicated, beloved. We, that's what we're supposed to be as followers and friends of God. That's what the psalmist was saying. If you want to be on God's list, you got to be honest, transparent. You need to be trustworthy. You need to be fair. But the reality is, beloved, uh, this kind of integrity is more rare than we realize. Man, man, I have discovered that people lie all the time. <laughs> this is what I have found it out. I mean, I've I've noticed and I've done a survey of the land, not necessarily here at Emmaus. I'm suggesting that peoples in general, in general I'm speaking, generally, 
that I have discovered that the children lie to their parents and siblings lie to each other and employees lie to their bosses and students lie to the teacher and men lie to the side chick and women lie to themselves. People lie all the time. I mean, speeding drivers lie to the police officers. Officers lie to the judges. The judges lie to everybody. Donald Trump lie about everything. People lie easily. The city of Chicago seems to be lying about its motivation behind the Jesse Smollett case. It's likely less about justice and all about ousting yet another black woman uh, because she has figured out the inside game. Amen. Uh, it's a lie to say one is pro-life when you will not support the fetus with healthy school lunches, adequate health care, elderly benefits. That's a lie. The myth of the American dream is a lie to normalize ill-gotten wealth, to sacralize capitalism, to justify inequity, and to pacify the critics. Everybody lying around here that the Homewood Flossmill children who didn't know that blackface was an insult. That's a lie. It's contrary to what the popular film sir says, Madeir says, lawyers are liars. Everybody seemed to be lying to me. Lack of integrity. Integrity at its root is a commitment to be honest. Integrity is honesty. It's not just unity, but it's honesty. It requires that people can trust what you say. But instead, people choose not to tell the truth. It's so pervasive that there are even categories or kinds of lies. We have the little white lie, and we have the black face or the bold face lie. Now, if I had time to kind of rest there, I would want to talk about the sublimity reinforcement of a racial hegemony because it's a little white lie, but it's a big black face lie. I'm just saying, notice how we're constantly reinforcing these things, but I don't have time for that because I'm preaching and not teaching. And so there are kinds of lies and there's a levels of lies and there are nuances to how we lie. I mean, there are the error kind of lie where you just misspeak, but you think you're telling the truth, right? You think the party was at two o'clock and it was at three. That was just an error. A girl is at three. You're not trying to lie. It's just kind of happy, you know? There there's the lies of omission, when you leave out important details that you know will cause people to think a certain way about a person. That's a lie. Uh, there's a lie of denial, just outright. Well, that ain't true. There's a lie of minimization. It wasn't that bad. It's a lie of exaggeration. The bitch was this big. You understand what I'm saying? And then there's just a straight fabrication kind of lie, outright untruth, as if there really is a threat at the border, as if it really is kids are being taken care of in these uh, new, new concentration type camps, if you will, right? Oh, that's a lie. Lie. People do it all the time. If our real life was like that fairy book tale, Pinocchio, people couldn't get next to each other because all of our noses would be about two feet long. We so far from the truth sometimes. Now, I know people have reasons for not telling the truth. Sometimes it's convenient. It's just customary you come from a no truth telling kind of family, amen? And so you don't even recognize <laughs> you prone to it. Uh, it just become common. It makes life more comfortable. It's compulsory. And sometimes it's simply a lack of good character. But for me, I think the reason or the motivation is some of us, many of us, a few of us, all of us kind of slip into not telling the truth or lying, lacking integrity, is rooted in a deep sense of fear. Fear that our mistakes and our mishaps and our misdirections and our misjudgments might end or break relationship. Fear that people will discover our frailty in our thoughts. Fear that the relationship can't survive the truth. Fear that we are not loved, we are not enough, or we're not worthy. Fear that we might lose something or somebody or some status. Fear of punishment and penalty. Fear that the amazing grace that I talked about last week is not really for us. So when you got fear operating, it's easy to slip into dishonesty. It's easy to shy away from integrity. For 37 years, Rebecca Pearson on that show, This Is Us, lied to her African-American adopted son, Randall, because she was afraid of losing him if he ever met his biological father. And it's understandable that we are afraid. Because sometimes to tell the truth means that there are some immediate, uncomfortable consequences to the truth. But can I just remind you what John 8, 32 says, that if you dare the truth to tell the truth, it also will set you free. It takes a whole lot of energy to hold some of the secret 
and to embrace a lot of the shame that we're carrying around when we simply can tell the truth, get it over well, and keep on moving. See, integrity is invitation to face our deepest fear and still choose to be honest about our situation and our circumstance. Integrity. See, we and the Pearsons on that TV show are not the only ones who struggle with this idea of integrity. In fact, people have struggled with integrity and truth-telling since the beginning of recorded biblical history. One of the first lies told in the Holy Bible was told by the serpent who effectively called God a liar. But we're at the beginning. We ain't even got to chapter number five, amen? Then Cain lied about killing Abel. Then Sarah lied about laughing when told she was bare son in the old age. Then Abraham lied about his wife being his sister. Then Joseph's brother's lied about putting him in the pit of him dying and all of this is in Genesis. We ain't even gotten to the rest of the Bible, y'all. So this human wrestling with truth telling is sort of in our DNA. It's at the beginning of the human experience. But I need to remind us, beloved, that integrity means telling the truth with our words. That's how you get invited to God's dinner list and God's table. Integrity. But the truth be told, um, the untruths and the half-truths and the lies that we tell other people often pales in comparison to the lies that we tell ourselves. See, on the one hand, integrity means being honest with our words, but integrity also means being intentional with our priorities. Some of us tell lies. Others of us live lives. Our walk and our words and our witness are incongruent. We are living beneath privilege and, and responsibility. We live on the shady side of things. We are not fully present. We're not showing up fully for our lives. We hide things from others and ourselves. More than a few of us are not living up to our fullest potential. We are living a lie. Can I remind you that integrity is not just unity, but integrity is, is also transparency and it's, it's consistency, right? Some of us say one thing, but we live another. We claim we have one standard, but we live far beneath it. We're not even striving toward the truth. I mean, we say we value the team, but we also always take all the credit, amen? We say that God forgives, but we live under constant condemnation. We recite scripture, but we, in fact, we are functional atheists. When things get hard and life gets difficult, we bail on God and on faith. We say we want a full, long life, but we live on fried foods, hot chips, and soda. Amen. There's some inconsistency to the word. So we live it a lie. And, 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 and in fact, far too many of us spend all of our energy or too much of our energy living out other people's evil prophecies over our lives. We're not even living our own lives. We're living somebody else's. Right? We're spending all of our energy or far too much energy living out other people's evil prophecy over our lives. We are living as if we are not loved and not lovable, as if we are not good or smart or pretty or handsome enough, as if we don't deserve goodness and companionship in a break, as if we're not contributing to the kingdom of God, as if we'll never be any better than we are today, as if we really truly deserve the mistreatment, the abuse, or the rejection, as if it's too late to start off and do something different as if we don't need sleep rest or exercise that if there is no hope for us that's a lie beloved the truth is that God has created us and called us good that God so loved the world that Jesus came to walk among us the truth is each of us is precious in God's sight and we have a gift to be shared the truth is God is working every single thing out for the good even the crappy part the truth is Sabbath and play must be a part of our rhythm of worship the truth is that shouldn't have happened to you it was not there your fault they were evil misdirected misguided and messed up the truth is forgiveness is for each of us every single time the truth is that God never gives up on any of us and things can change in a moment faster than immediately suddenly things can just work out in your favor don't believe the lie live the truth. Have integrity with yourself. Be who God created you to be. You are more ready than you realize. Say what you mean 
and live what you say. I don't know what your truth is. And there's all kinds of discussions about what truth is. And I'm open to all of them, right? I love the prophet Muhammad says it this way. There is nothing heavier in the scales than good character. Shakespeare says it this way. If you are true to yourself, you can't be false to anybody. The Buddha says it this way. There are three things that cannot be long hidden. The sun, the moon, and the truth. But I'm calling to tell you today, whatever your truth is, live it. In the words of teen pop star Jojo Siwa, be the number one you. Amen. Be authentic. Align yourself with your purpose and your passion. Put your truth into action. But because I have found truth in Jesus, for me it says this, Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth, because he is the way, the truth, and the life. So that's sort of my image, my parameter, my boundaries of what it means to be the truth. You got to live with truth with yourself. There was a story told of a pastor who had been doing teaching series on, on the truth and honesty. And so the pastor is doing a little series and so proud of the series. Well, lo and behold, one day the pastor needs a ride, so he calls a taxi cab. These are in the days before Uber and Lyft, amen. And so they called a taxi company people, right? Some 1-800 number. And a taxi came up. <laughs> And picked the pastor up and took him to his destination. And they got to the destination. And the person who was driving the taxi cab said, oh, your bill is X amount of dollars. And so the pastor paid. And so when he got his change back, he had too much change. And so the pastor looked and he said, well, I thought he said the bill. So he's in the back seat. This is the pastor telling the story. He said, he's in the back seat. Kind of like, how did you come up with that number? And so he's getting ready to get out the car. And he said, sir, I think you gave me too much money if indeed the bill is what you said. And the cab driver said, Reverend, I'm so glad you gave me the money back. Because I visited your church on Sunday, and you said something about telling the truth. And I was just trying to see if you really meant it. He said it was a test. Have a good day. I believe I'll come back next week. Because People do that, y'all. And, and, so, and so there was some continuity. He had integrity with himself. He said, I believe the text says this. I believe my life should be like this. And so your integrity means you got to live the same on the inside and the outside. Are you all still with me? Uh, I, that's what integrity is. That's how you get invited to God's table, right? It's not that complicated. You got to live in integrity, unity with yourself, in transparency, in consistency, in honesty. I love how the Southwest Airlines, uh, they have this little slogan called transparency. Have y'all seen it? The transparency, you have a definition. It's a philosophy in which customers are treated honestly and fairly. How is the airport people, the airplane people, trying to have more integrity than the saints? Amen. They say you got to treat people honestly and fairly. They're not going to have any hidden fees. They're going to do it like it is. I love this. And I just want to call uh, the saints of God today to transparency. Amen. Um, I'll pray that you would just care enough to be yourself at all times with integrity no matter wherever you go. That there is not any disconnect in your heart, your walk, your way, and your witness. That's how you get invited to the Lord's table. It's not that difficult. Walk straight, act right, tell the truth. Don't hurt your neighbor. Don't blame your neighbor. Don't hurt your friend. Despise the despicable. It's not that complicated. To be people of integrity means we have to not discriminate against people. We got to be fair, impartial, unbiased, objective, just. We have to allow, thank you, Sister Shirley, to allow our hearts to break for what is wrong and what breaks the heart of God. We have to notice microaggressions and then say we won't participate in the ways that people annihilate and isolate other people. That's what integrity is. It's having the same standard all the time. I had an opportunity the other day. I love books. I love books. I love books. I love words. I love reading. And so whenever I have a chance, I don't need any more books, but books call to me. Amen. They just call to me. And so when I try to get books, I order books and I read them. Well, uh, but but uh, there was, a, um, what do you call these estate sale things in my neighborhood? That's what they call them. And so uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. And I just like to go in there because I like a bargain, right? I also like to look inside people's house and see what was in there. You know what I mean? It's a point for me. I just feel like, well, it's open. I wonder what it was like up in there. And so it's open, it don't be open. I have to go on in there with the other people. 
And so I did. I went in there one day. I needed a, just a break from the heaviness of my life and the things that were on my heart. I said, I got 10 minutes. I walk in there with my little 10 singles. That's how you go on these things. Your 10 singles. That's what I'm going to spend. And they have this person. Oh, my word. They must have been a senior saint because I went in their basement. Oh, my word. If they had one book, they had a thousand. Their whole basement was lined with books. And some of them looked like they were, look, first editions. Amen. I mean, they, were, they had the crack binding. It was just, it was a book lover's paradise. And, I, and they had albums in it. Like, you know, vinyl. I mean, it was just like, it was like a museum type of place. And so I'm in there with this other fella, and we just, we, we are in just heaven, because it's just books and books, and they were religious searchers, because they had a whole section, literally three bookcases of all kind of religious traditions and faith. So it could see, so you, whatever your tradition was, your true statement was, you could get books. So I'm in there, it's dusty, I'm so excited, and I see they have Dante's three volumes. It, look, Dante's three volumes. Hear me, y'all know I'm going that. I'm like, yeah! So I'm scooping up. I'm like, oh, I got to have this. And they had this book on Genesis, the new interpretation Hebrew text. I was like, oh, give me this. And so I have my stack of books. And it's another gentleman over here. He's grabbing books off the shelf, too. And so here we are. We have myself and this other gentleman. So we get to the checkout where they, where you do the pricing. This man in front of me, he has probably 30 books, crack cover books, and he happens to be of a different racial ethnic group than I am. And so the lady says to him for his books, and she says whatever price it was, I don't know what it was. He had about 30 books, and she probably said, I don't know, $8 some little number. So I had 10 books. So I knew my books was going to be $5, right? Because I was just doing the mathematics on the book sales. I, I just, I'm estimating. I ain't quite sure. But you know, she said, oh, yours is $10. I said, oh, tell me how it works. I thought, you know, you know, because maybe he got different kind of books. All his books 25 cents. But I'm looking at some of the cover. Because y'all do know I got a couple degrees, right? And so I can read this fine. So I kind of know where error books came from. I know what cracked spines look like. And so I, I know who Shakespeare is, amen. And so I know these kind of people. I know who Dante So I looked and I said, ma'am, um, all I'm willing to spend is the $5. She said, well, which books do you want to put back? I said, oh. And so in that moment, I had an integrity moment with myself. <laughs> the first part of my integrity, it says, you are a believer. Not just the past, you are a believer. So now it's not a good time to respond, at least. Now it's not a good time to respond. Because you might respond out of your humanity and not out of your integrity with your Christian confession. So I inhale, I stepped away from the counter, and I said to myself, okay, this is not only a microaggression. I get what this is. I get, so you're trying to take advantage of me. I get it, I get it. And so what I said was to myself, do you really want these books? And I said, I kind of want these, but I don't need them. I don't really need them. But the, but the Dante volume I did need, because I don't have that in my own library. I said, so is it worth that? But I recognized I was bleeding by this time, because I knew what was happening. And so I told her, I said, you know what? This is all the money I had to spend. Let me put these back, I said. But you know what? I do have four singles here. Let me see how much change I have in the car. Pray for the pastor. Because I had to be myself. So I went back to my house and my car come from Detroit. Pray for me, I confess. I had to have integrity myself because I was hot, mad. I scooped out all the change out of the cup holder. And I went back to the counter. I said, I think I have enough. And I said, one, two, three, four. What about I got nickel? Five. He's a guy. Wait, what, the 33 cent? Wait, I'm working on, I'm working on. How, how much more do I owe you? How much more do I owe you? How much more do I owe you? And I went, ooh, 37, 42. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 59, 63. I did it. Pray for me. I did. And I put all my, I did. I did do that. Pray for me. I did. I did. And I gave a change. I said, is this enough? He said, yes. Just give it to me. You don't have to count it out. Let's just take all the books. Take all the books. Just take the books. And you know I went home with eight books. Y'all, what y'all talking about? Pray for me. Pray for me. I'm just, I'm just confessing. Because when you have integrity, you can't be non-discriminatory. You, you, you can't discriminate people. You can't just make up stuff because of the person looks like you or you appreciate them, right? So that, that was a lack of integrity. But honestly, for me, I had to have integrity with myself. Because I couldn't walk away from that moment saying that I was not wounded and not communicated, I see you. Now, I'm not going to act a fool. I'm not going to fuss, cuss, carry on, and make a scene. But if we're going to bring the conversation down to this level of engagement, I shall meet you where you are. And so it was very clear in that moment 
the woman recognized, I have offended this lady. I have insulted her intelligence, and I act like she don't have no money. And so I met her exactly where she was. I know what just happened. I can read and count and have money. But if you want to take the money this away, here are the coins I have to add to your collection. And I am going to walk away because it was important to me to get those three books. Now, of course, I could have ordered them and got them some other way. But in the moment, I felt obligated to have a teaching lesson because I'm a professor also. I don't want people to walk away in ignorance because I don't want the next person who doesn't have my tenacity to have to deal with what I had to go through. Are you all still with me? So that's integrity. I'm not talking about doormatism. That was integrity with my self because there is a life that's trying to live in me, right? And so it is. So that's what it means. That's how you get invited to God's table. It, it's right. It's right. I despise. That's on the verse number 3.4. If y'all miss where that point came from, despise the despicable. You don't co-sign on crazy integrity, right? I despise it. That's it. I'm, 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 I'm preaching the book today. That's preaching the book, straight from the book. And, and so it is, beloved. And so lastly, integrity is one of our core passions. And we said every first Sunday we strive to have integrity because integrity at, at a very baseline is loyalty to the holy. Integrity is our key identity at the Emmaus community. It is because Jesus has been described as one who told the truth and was a man of grace. And so every time we ourselves walk in integrity, every time we are transparent, honest, trustworthy, and fair, we honor the Holy One of Israel. We honor the intentions of God, who God self described himself as a person of truth. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. 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 You may rise on your feet. Thank you all. Um, that's who we want to be, friends. We want to be in people of integrity. So that's my invitation on this holiday weekend to be people of integrity. That your inside match your outside. Your words match your walk. That you're honest, trustworthy, transparent, and fair. If you're a visitor, we're glad you're hanging with us. Come back again another time. First Sunday is next Sunday, so there's only one gathering. But I do want y'all to rest up after all the celebrations this weekend because I really do want us all to be present and accounted for next week at our 10 o'clock gathering. We're expecting guests and friends, but we want to make sure the home team is represented as we, won during the 10 o'clock, acknowledge the completion for our Joshua Tribe members. Also, our ministerial licenses for Sister Natasha Richards right here and Miss Wanda. And so we're so glad. And Miss Wanda Simpson, we're so excited for their journey of commitment as we continue to encourage them. And we also want you to be here at 10, but you also want to get a quick lunch and come back at 3 o'clock because we're going to have our affirmation of ordination and our installation for our own minister, uh, the Reverend Isaac E. Hayes. And so it'll be a great day of celebration. So make sure that you plan accordingly uh, for that. Okay? Amen? Amen. 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 Let's say our benediction. You are your places of work. And even when you don't think anyone is looking, even when you don't think you are worthy, you are taking the next step into a great journey. Invite your friends to go with you. Move onward and upward. Christ living in you is the hope of the world. There is no other plan. So go out and be who God is calling you to be. You are more ready than you realize. Amen, amen. Go in peace, be safe out there. Be safe out there.